Let's call this meeting to order, please. Everybody have a seat that's going to be sitting down. Everybody, please stand up, take your hats off. Gentlemen, take your hats off. Ready? God of the universe, look thou with favor upon these here assembled, and bestow thy guidance upon the members of the governing body in their deliberations. This we ask in thy name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. Woke up this morning and I realized that summer is over. Anyway, in the event of an emergency, the proper method of exiting the council chambers is through the three doors in the rear of the room. Everyone should get up, walk out, and walk away from the building. Any member of the public wishing to speak during the public comment session at the end of the meeting, please sign in on the white sheets provided at the front of the room. And turn all your cell phones, please. Seems like the past couple of days I've been hearing a lot of cell phones. So let's have a little consideration, turn them off, put them vibrate. Look at that, everybody running for the cell phones and turning them off. Mr. Clark, please, call the roll. Mrs. Orman. Here. Javik. Here. Brown. Here. Brooks. Here. Cosby. Here. Sadowski. Yes. Strano. Here. Yamakaitis. Here. Medina. Uh, he's excused for the day. Hickey. Here. Mr. Alvarez. Here. We have a few presentations, and we're going to start. Uh, Mayor, can you and the chief please come to the front? You want to call him? Want to call? You want me to call him? <laughs> Officer Hammer. Good evening, everybody. T tonight we have a resolution uh, recognizing Investigator Peter Hammer um, as he has been selected to be our 2017 so Police nice. Officer of the uh, Year. Now, we prepared. A, uh, a resolution for o Officer Hammer, but the words in this resolution cannot compare to the type of police officer that Officer Hammer is. Officer Hammer, if you recall, was involved uh, in the capture of, our, of, of a terrorist here in our town. Um, and not only was he involved, Officer Hammer took a bullet. But what's and that's, that's a tough thing for, to happen to a person. But it wasn't so much that he took a bullet, you know. That's just half the story. He went to the hospital, and as soon as he was up and running again, I mean, he, he couldn't wait to get back to work. And that's the type of person this guy is. You know, I, I, used, to, I used to tease him when he first came on, because we, we're like the old guys now. And uh, I, he's, he's, he's tough as nails, and so he's got the right name, Hammer. Uh, <laughs> He's always been tough, you know, and, and from what I understand, you know, he got it honest, I heard. I heard his father was pretty much the same way, you know, tough guy in a good, in a good way, okay, uh, and, and, you could, and you can count on him. Uh, when the going gets tough, they tell me that the, the hammers get tougher, or they get going. So uh, we're, just, we're just very fortunate to have police officers like Peter Hammer on our force. Um, and, uh, and he should always be, we all always appreciate what he did for us in this town on that infamous day when we had terror come right here to Linden, New Jersey. 
he stood up to the challenge. So I just, I, you know, I have a proclamation, I mean a resolution I'm going to read, uh, but again, words written in paper can't say enough about what this man is and what he stands for. So it reads as follows, whereas police officers risk their lives each day in order to ensure public safety and enforce the laws of the land. And whereas Peter Hammer, after serving in the United States Marine Corps, joined the City of Linden's Police Department in 1994 and dedicated himself to protecting and serving the residents of Linden, its neighborhoods, its schools, and families. And whereas since that time, he has distinguished himself on numerous occasions by proudly serving on the front lines of the battle against crime. And whereas on Monday, September 19, 2016, 16, officers were dispatched to a report of a man sleeping in a vestibule of a local business. Upon arrival, officers recognized the man as Ahmad Khan Rahimi, a suspect wanted in a federal investigation involving explosive devices that detonated in New Jersey and New York City. And whereas the first officer on the scene began to question the suspect, who pulled out a handgun and began shooting at the officers. And whereas investigator Peter Hammer responded to the area, area driving towards the suspect as he ran from the scene, at which point Ahmad Khan Rahami opened fire on Officer Hammer, resulting in Officer Hammer being wounded. Injured, the officer exited the vehicle and joined his fellow officers in the exchange of gunfire that ended in the apprehension of Ahmad Khan Rahami. And whereas in recognition of the sacrifices made by investigator Peter Hammer in the line of duty, the mayor and council of this city of Linden wishes to honor him and thank him for his services to the city of Linden. Now therefore it be resolved by the city council of the city of Linden that they, that, they, that they hereby recognize investigator Peter Hammer for his highly credible and exemplary performance of his duties, as well as his, as his extraordinary bravery by declaring him as the city of Linden's 2017 Police Officer of the Year. Now therefore it be resolved, be it further resolved, that this resolution be entered into the minutes of the City Council, the City of Linden, and a copy be presented to Investigator Hammer in recognition of the foregoing. And it's signed by President George Alvarez and myself, Mayor Derek Armstead. And again, we thank you, Peter Hammer, for all your efforts and for being a great police officer in this town. You're making me say something. Um, I'm not into public speaking. I'm just here to do my job and go home and do the best job I can while I'm here. Uh, it's nice to be appreciated. I, I will, uh, I'll be real brief. Um, if, if you can imagine um, being involved in a, in a car accident and uh, for those of you that have been involved in car accidents, you know how traumatic it is to get back in the car and get behind the wheel and drive. But now imagine something that's even a lot worse. Imagine facing down uh, someone who wants to kill you, uh, who wants to kill the people that you love, who wants to kill what, everything that you stand for. Now imagine being shot by that person. Imagine being shot and then deciding that it's not time to lay down and die, it's time to capture this person. That's the type of person that Officer Peter Hammer is. That's the kind of man he is. That's the kind of police officer he is. Uh, and what is great is just exemplified by what he just said. He truly is that guy who just wants to do his job. He truly is that guy who does not run from the fight but runs to it. So God bless Pete and uh, really proud of him. Thank you, sir. At this time, we're doing a presentation. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, Mayor Armstead, Councilwoman Cosby, and I would also like to call down Councilwoman Hickey, who happens to be a breast cancer survivor. The reason this resolution is on tonight is for Ms. Nancy Braxton, so could you come forward, please? Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. So, good evening, everyone. Um, as you know, we started to do this seven years ago when I got elected to council. This was one of the initiatives that I started. And when I found out that my neighbor was a survivor two times, um, I said, wow, you never know what someone's going through. You know what I mean? And Nancy did her every day, walking her dog, and she was doing everything she had to do in the community. And I just happened to ask you a question one day. He was like, oh, well, this is the reason why. And I was like, wow. So I was asking, could we celebrate you? Yes. Because you're here. Yes. And that's what breast cancer awareness is all about, um, celebrating our survivors, caregivers, and those who help to spread the word about. Well, so God bless you. Thank you. I'm glad that um, we're here with you tonight and your victory. We have a resolution, and I'm gonna read the resolution as we stand here with Councilwoman Hickey and the mayor. Um, as we said, Councilwoman Hickey is also a survivor. She was um, two years, Councilwoman, yeah. So we're gonna read the resolution and, um, woo, okay. Resolution honoring Nancy C. Braxton as a breast cancer survivor, whereas every 69 seconds, somewhere in the world, a woman dies of breast cancer. Every three minutes, a woman in the United States is diagnosed with breast cancer, and every 13 minutes, a woman loses her battle with the disease. And whereas worldwide, breast cancer is the most frequently diagnosed life-threatening cancer in women and the leading cause of cancer death among women, and whereas increased public awareness and improved screening have led to earlier diagnosis and the survival rates of breast cancer have improved significantly, and whereas Nancy was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer in March of 1998, and then again in September 2016. And whereas for the next several months, Nancy endured the rigors of chemotherapy. And whereas Nancy has since then been working with her doctors to gain her strength and has offered her life as an example of how early detection can save lives. Nancy is the proud mother of John, is that the fifth, the fourth? fourth. The fourth, <laughs> Roman numerals, <laughs> and Tayana Mayo. And whereas this month Nancy celebrates being cancer free and whereas the month of October has been declared Breast Cancer Awareness Month nationwide. Now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and the council of the city of Linden, we recognize Nancy Braxton for her courage in fighting this disease and wish to thank her for her dedication to increasing awareness about breast cancer and early detection. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be placed in the minutes of the City Council of the City of Linden and be appropriately presented to Nancy Braxton. I'm just going to be real brief. You know, I, I said that Officer Hammer was tough as nails. Well, this lady right here is tough as nails, too. You know what I mean? I want to thank everyone, but first I'd like to thank God, because without him, I wouldn't be here. This is two times he has pulled me out of the fire, and Lord, thank you. I want to thank everyone that came out for me, all my friends from Morningstar, all my friends city council and the mayor and all the citizens of Linden, thank you. But let it be known that it's very serious. Cancer is very, very serious. Breast cancer is no joke. It can come and go, come and go. It's like you're in the walking in the, at night and you think somebody's behind you. That's how it feels when you, you don't know. You've already had the diagnosis and then you had it again. It's like you just keep walking behind you. You keep testing. Make sure everyone, ladies, please have your daughters and yourself, please do your mammograms. Early detection is the best. I was stage one twice. That's early for detection. And just thank you all for everything. <laughs>
Okay, it seems like I skipped something on the agenda and I was just corrected. So now I have to go back and I need a motion to approve the minutes for the September 19th, 2017 regular meeting. Council President, I make a motion to approve the minutes for the regular meeting of September 19th, 2017 and kindly ask for a second, please. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby Harling? Cos Mrs. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this time, more than 6148, continue from the August 15th meeting. I'm going to ask for a motion. Council President, I'd like to make a motion to hold um, Ordinance 61-48. And ask for a second. I second that. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Motion is approved. We're going to start with the uh, ordinance on hearing. Mr. Bore, can you please read 61-64? An ordinance to amend and supplement chapter 14, fire prevention and protection of an ordinance entitled, an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999, passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Delete section 14-1.9, additional inspections and fees in its entirety. Add new section 14-1.9, additional required inspections and fees. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communication being received? No, sir. Is there anyone that wishes to be heard on this ordinance? <coughs> May I have a motion, please? Uh, I move to close uh, ordinance uh, 6164 and ask for a second. <coughs> second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Mr. Bore, can you please read Ordinance 61-65? Bond ordinance providing an appropriation of $57,200 for acquisition of pay per space kiosk stations for and by the City of Linden and authorizing the issuance of $54,340 bonds or notes of the City of Linden for financing part of the appropriation. Has the ordinance been properly published and posted? Yes, sir. Any written communication received? No, sir. Does anybody want to speak on this ordinance? In that case, may I have a motion, please? Yeah, Council President, I'd like to uh, motion that the uh, hearing for ordinance number 6165 be closed. The ordinance adopted, and I request a second. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this time, we're going with the consent agenda. All items listed with asterisks are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussions on these items unless a council member or citizen so request, in which event the item will be removed from the general order of business and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Items one through six. Does anybody want to remove any of these items? In that case, may I have a motion, please, for items one through six? Council President, I ask for a motion on the cons consent agenda for items one through six and ask for a second. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes, except, except six. number six. I will abstain on that one. Okay. In case anybody's wondering, I abstain number six. That's my Halloween Hunter House, which I have every year. Everybody's welcome. It's very scary. Just as scary as when you get your, your taxes notices. 
<laughs> okay, let's start with committee reports. We will start with Councilwoman Orman. Thank you, Council President. I'm going to be uh, really brief um, as I'm going to defer anything in terms of redevelopment that's going on in the first ward to the mayor. I'd like to first of all thank those who participated in our first community wide yard sale. We did have some families that decided to participate and I was really excited. They had been asking for a while, when is the first ward going to do one? Well, we did in conjunction with the ninth and the 10th ward. So I thank you guys, um, Councilman Medina and Councilwoman Hickey, Hickey for um, uh, allowing the first ward to kind of like piggyback um, off of you guys. It was wonderful. Um, the people that did participate were really excited and we're gonna do it again in the spring. Uh, next on my agenda is the uh, leaf season. Um, we will have bags available at the Donaldson um, area of, of the Department of Public Works. For anyone who would like to get bags, there's gonna be a limit to, I believe, what is a, a 10 per uh, resident. You must show proof of residency in order to get them. But for my seniors who are having a difficult time or will, who will have a difficult time getting there, you can call me. I will be more than happy to bring them to you and if you can't make it there, I will have a limited supply for other residents as well. But once again, it's the same rules pertain. You must be a resident of the city. You must show proof of your residency, and they're going to be limited in um, quantity. Continuing with the leaf, just remember you can blow or rake your leaves to the curb, and we will have our trucks that will come and remove them. I just ask you, please do not put them in the catch basins because it creates problems when it rains and we have flooding and backup um, of our sewer systems and we're gonna try hard to avoid that. We also had a traffic meeting um, for the first ward, just small pockets of the first ward to address some of the issues pertaining to parking. Um, I heard your concerns and I just wanna just reiterate that it's not gonna be an instant fix but we are a little bit closer to having the problem resolved and that's from the uh, car dealerships parking their cars on the street, as well as um, employees of some of the businesses just leaving their cars parked for hours and hours and hours. I'd also like to acknowledge um, Police Officer Hammer and congratulate him on his um, being named Officer of the Year. That is something that is just absolutely amazing and I'm sure it's a story that he'll be able to tell his grands and his great grands how he actually not just made Linden safer, but he made the world a safer place. One escaped terrorist can wreak terror <laughs> on the world. So we appreciate his effort. We appreciate what he has done to make, like us to make us safe. The Halloween parade is gonna be October 29th. Last year's Halloween parade was great. This year it's gonna be just as good, if not better. So I'm encouraging all of the people from the first ward, please come on out, as well as the city of Linden, please come out and celebrate that parade with us. And then last but not least, I would just like to um, acknowledge worldwide, countrywide, statewide, countywide, citywide, all of the amazing women who are breast cancer survivors. I wore pink today in honor of you. It's a disease that is just relentless. So for the survivors, Continue to fight like no tomorrow until there is a cure. That ends my report. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Javik. Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First, I want to thank John Vendetto of Public Works. I had many compliments uh, with how he handled the trash rollout in the second ward. He truly went over and above in solving the problems that arose. Uh, I also want to thank Frank Mikushi, who is always there when you need him. Uh, I'm still getting calls on street sweeping. Please understand we don't have it, the extra truck yet. We're doing the best we can, uh, minus the truck. We are also working on the parking situation, especially around the JTG Center area, and in addition, doing traffic studies to see how we can slow traffic down on our cut-through streets, meaning West Blanky Street, Knopf Street, West Elm Street, West Henry Street, West Curtis Street, from Woody Avenue to North Style Street, and um, Marion Avenue, Lexington Avenue, Bradford Avenue, from Elizabeth Avenue to West Blanky Street. Also, we're addressing the existing problems with the uh, truck traffic. In regards to our landfill, the solar farm, we have extended our bidder or proposer period by three more weeks. It's looking very promising where we should have extra uh, kilowatts to even sell back to the grid. 
Just a note, we had uh, fire prevention night last Friday with an excellent turnout in front of the city hall. This week is fire prevention week and the uh, firefighters will be doing, will be going to our schools, advising and giving information. Um, school eight Friday uh, is the PTA fall festival from six to 8.30 p.m. It's a family carnival style event with games and prizes including face painting, uh, food, refreshments, sweet treats. Entrance fee is gonna be $8. We hope to see you all there. And don't forget the Halloween parade, Sunday, October 29th at 2 p.m. I heard it's even bigger and better than last year. End of my report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Brown. All right, um, real quick for Third Ward um, news. Um, I guess this not just related to the Third Ward, but throughout the city. I know residents have uh, made requests for street lights to be um, uh, installed or many posts throughout the uh, city. Unfortunately, to still bear with us, you know, the city has made this request, especially in the third ward. We're still waiting for PSNG to install these lights. Um, in regards to street paving in the third ward, uh, as we see Maple Avenue, construction has started on the, on the sidewalks, on the curbs. Over the next couple of weeks, um, Maple Avenue should be repaved as well as Maple Avenue. Um, if you have any trees that need to be trimmed, again, contact myself or the mayor's office or DPW with October uh, here and November and December. We know usually we get storms that cause some of these trees to fall or break and cause some property damage. So I just ask residents, if you can't contact me, also contact the mayor's office or contact DPW so we can get these trees trimmed as quickly as possible. Uh, other than that, I'll end the report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Brooks. Thank you, Council President. I have a report here, several reports, one from the Department of Public Property and Community Services. I hereby submit the monthly financial report for the Division of Transportation and Parking for the month of September 2017. This report includes the collection of on and off street parking meters, railroad parking lots, railroad parking permits, and merchant parking permits. New York side collections, $4,184. Trenton side collections, $4,067. Credit card transactions, $27,540. And 56 cents. Parking meter collections, $8,579.30. Railroad permits, $37,656.55. Merchant permits, $65. Grand total, $82,272.41. From the City Clerk's Office, the City Clerk's Licensing Division is submitting this monthly report for the month of September 2017. This office issued 38 dog licenses and 77 miscellaneous licenses and collected $4,270. Also from the clerk's office, the following license, licenses, permits, and transcripts issued in the city clerk's office during the month of September 2017 and fees received have been turned over to the municipal treasurer of the city of Linden. 95 birth, death, and marriage transcripts, $1,425. No state revenue, 36 marriage and civil union licenses, $108, $900 state revenue, um, eight miscellaneous revenue, $13.40, bingo raffles, $20, 125 EDRS vital statistics, $1,875, interest earned, 46 cents, grand total, $4,348. The $41.86. From uh, the fourth ward, Mr. Matucci, thanks again for your help there. On Saturday, we had to remove between, and again, maybe I spoke too soon with regard to this in terms of us keeping up with this. We had to remove uh, carpets in the same general area between Union Street and Henry Streets on the railroad track side. It would really do my heart well. We have a lot of eyes out there. Please. Give myself a call, let me know. Obviously, I don't want anyone to approach anyone, but if you can get a, a, a license plate or anything like that to identify who this individual or individuals are, I would love to be able to give them the most extreme ticket that we have available to us. Uh, again, that's usually between Union Street and Henry Streets on the railroad track side. Um, that concludes my report, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Cosby. Thank you, Council President. I'm gonna give a report from the Board of Health. The London Health Department has scheduled an influenza immunization program for Wednesday,
November the 1st at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the John T. Gregorio Recreation Center on Helen Street. All London residents age 60 and older and all London residents with chronic illnesses are encouraged to be vaccinated against seasonal influenza. Pre-registration is suggested, requested for this program. Please call the health department at 908-474-8409 between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Again, it's 908-474-8409. That's for the Board of Health to pre-register for the November 1st influenza program. From the construction code, we have they generated 221 permits and 18 certificates for the month of September, and they collected $67,192 in fees. We also have, a res well, we have, we're looking to hire two part-time code enforcement officers that are going to also help us to enforce some of the regulations that we have in our commercial districts. So that's going to be helpful as well. And in the construction code um, department, our committee, has been looking at ways that we can streamline the reports that residents may have relative to complaints about unkept property or property that is questionable in the use that you know goes on in that property. It's still a work in progress, but we're working on that. But I do want to say that we're no longer going to be accepting anonymous tips because they don't hold up in court. You can't go to the judge and say we got a tip and then there's no witness for that so we're going to ask if you know somebody has a concern if you don't want to leave your name then you want to contact your council member so that we can go out and you know take a look and then be that witness so that if the inspector makes a summons that is you know it has some weight and we can get those fines collected for any violations that are deemed appropriate also from construction code i'm going to make a motion for the approval of the installation of a street light um, I apologize to the councilman in the seventh ward because in my absence, it was supposed to be read in. So the poll number is 64111LD and the location is 235 Arthur, Arthur Street. Um, just so that we can have that in, I ask for a second. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. In the fifth ward, there's going to be paving that's going to take place on Park Avenue. Um, it's, you know, we scheduled that a while ago last year, and so it's going to be done this year. As soon as we know the exact dates, then I'll publicize that also. I want to remind everyone about the upcoming events that we have this Sunday. Actually, first, we're going to start with Saturday. Saturday is the fifth and the fourth ward, ward-wide yard sale. So this fee free, you don't have to get a permit. If you'd like to be added to the list, I have a few addresses. I'll be glad to add your name, or I'm sorry, your address. And then I'm gonna share that publicly on the city's social media, my social media, and through an email so that anybody interested can come around to the fifth and fourth wards and you know find a treasure from the yard sale. So that's gonna be on Saturday. The rain date is going to be on Sunday. On Sunday, between 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, we will be at IOZ Park on Dill Avenue. Myself, the Board of Health is going to have representatives there, and we're going to be there to raise awareness for cancer. This is the second time that we're doing it. Rose Dulco, who's a resident, I think, in the Ninth Ward, she was my inspiration last year, and she's the reason why we're going to continue to do a cancer awareness walk. So if we do raise any funds, the funds are going to go to the Fifth Ward Friends for Life team and to Ms. Rose Delco to help with her medical expenses as she's a, a cancer survivor with a, a outstanding expenses. So we're going to be there from 9 to 9.30 registering people or just taking donations and you can walk at your own pace at IOC Park. And just as a gentle reminder, cancer affects us all. So with you, you just want to come. We're not there for publicity or anything. We're there to sincerely support our survivors. Nancy's going to be there and some of the other folks from the city of London who have lost a loved one or who's working with or giving care for a loved one who suffers from cancer. So if you can, come between 9 and 11 on Sunday. Then on Tuesday, we have our regular scheduled community meeting, which is at 6.30 at the John Street Center. And as we do every October, we celebrate Hispanic heritage. This year, we are celebrating a Linden resident who, 
I'm very fond of her. She's a, a, an awesome woman. She's a, a teacher turned vice principal now, Suzanne Olivero. So she'll be celebrated, and we have a resolution on for her tonight, too, at the community meeting. We're going to have light refreshments, uh, courtesy of Mason Traffic Call and Little Italy, because just because it's an Italian restaurant, they do have some really good empanadas, I'm just saying. <laughs> so you can stop by for the community meeting. Um, and we'll have, uh, we'll have a good time like we always do. I don't want to forget something because then I think that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Kosby. Councilman Sadowski. Thank you, Council President. Very short, just a couple of things. First, uh, DPW said that probably this week we'll be picking up leaves from the street. Was it this week? I think you said at the end. Yeah. Uh, if you do put them in the streets, please don't put them by the sewers. It, it clogs them up. Two, probably in about a week or so, uh, you'll be able to get leaf bags by going down to the center, signing up, and you get one package of leaf bags. So that's coming up. Um, in the sewage authority, uh, which I'm, I'm one of the members, uh, we are trying to get a new head of the sewage department. Uh, the gentleman who was there for 30-something years, Mr. Gary Fair, is leaving. So the next week, we are having interviews and see if we could pick someone to take his place. Uh, and the last thing, this is from the fire department. Uh, the Fire Prevention Bureau collected fees for permits, inspections, and penalties, totaling $4,679.47 for the month of September 2017. Ambulance Reimbursement Systems has deposited $59,333.33 in revenue generated by the Linden Fire Department's Emergency Medical Service for the month of, for the month of September. The total deposits for 2017 to date are $594,521.41. The fire department received the 70,000 grant from Phillips 66 Bayway Refinery and Phillips Midstream East Gulf Terminal Division. This grant will be used to purchase personal escape systems for each firefighter. Thank you, Phillips 66, for your continued support of the Linden Fire Department. October is Fire Prevention Month. Uh, we are out in the schools all month to have class trips coming also to the firehouse. We would like to thank the mayor and council for supporting our annual fire prevention night. The evening was well attended. Special thanks to public properties, the Linden Police Department, and FMBA 34 and 234 for help making this evening a success. Most importantly, we would like to thank the citizens of Linden who joined us, and we look forward to seeing you all next year. Please watch Channel 36 for videos of the event, and check out the Linden Fire Department's Facebook page for pictures and videos of the evening. Now, a little more important. With October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, FMBA 34 and 234 are selling breast cancer awareness t-shirts to support cancer research. They are both women and men's styles. They are available at the firehouse located at 302 Southwood Avenue. Shirts are $20 while they last. Now this, this is an example of the shirt. I asked the chief if I could wear it, you know, to show it, and uh, he said no, it would hurt sales, so I'm just showing it to you. Um, and like I said, once again, really, thanks to the fire department and police department for the wonderful job they do for safety. Uh, that concludes my. Thank you, Councilman Sadowski. Councilman Strano. Thank you, Council President. Uh, let me get the business out of the way first so I don't forget it. This is the, um, um, budget review and uh, finance report. Uh, this is the approval requesting the following finance actions. 
This is for the payment of bills totaling one million seven hundred ninety-one thousand eight hundred ninety-nine dollars and twenty-five cents in bills that have been signed by the mayor to council president and the finance chairman and a detailed check register and vouchers are on file in the clerk's office. We are in receipt of investments made by the city treasurer for the month of September at the rate of 1%. So I move for approval and ask for a second. 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 Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? No. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Okay, I'm going to report on some of the activities of the, uh, occurring in the seventh ward. Uh, currently, we're, uh, at this point, we've had uh, several streets resurfaced um, uh, through the programs through the city. Some of them are community development grant monies, others, others are uh, state, and still others are uh, through our capital improvement program. But we did have West 17th Street, uh, portions of uh, Trimley Point Road on the other side of Southwood Avenue where our businesses are, and um, Parkway off the top of my head. And currently, we are working on Clinton Street and lower road repairing the shoulders and creating shoulders where none existed before and i'm happy to report that there's actually activity and the work is actually um, has commenced um, i'm not happy to report that this has taken over 20 years to get done uh, but uh, when i was last on council uh, my first term i put in these requests and you know, they say government uh, moves slowly. Well, this was like a snail going backwards, uh, but we're finally getting it done. And I want to thank the engineering department for, uh, for their work there. Um, on another note, in the seventh ward coming up on November 2nd, uh, we have something that's unique to the entire city. It's unique to the county. It's probably even unique to uh, New Jersey that uh, uh, being that we have an airport and it is located in the 7th Ward, that we're going to have a car show that um, is co-sponsored by the City of Linden, but also by um, the Linden PBA, Galloping Hill Cruisers, BBC Speed and Machine, and the Garden State Gear Shifters. It's going to occur on November 5th. It'll be at the airport. Um, last year, they had over 200 cars uh, uh, registered for the show and over 2,000 uh, visitors, and they're expecting more this year. And uh, Joe Birch, who was here earlier, is probably, I thought maybe he would speak on it later on, but um, I guess he had to, to leave. Uh, this is a fundraiser for a scholarship fund in memory of Officer Frank Vigiano and uh, resident Joey Rodriguez. Um, and it's a good cause. So if you've got nothing to do and you're interested in antique cars, and come out. And I think uh, Councilman Brooks probably have a car, if I'm not mistaken, entered in it. Um, on another note, um, the, there's a resolution that's on. It's resolution number 2017-348. This is a resolution awarding a contract to Mark Paving and it's uh, for the resurfacing of Lower Road and Park Avenue, but the portion of it that's uh, referring to Lower Road uh, includes the improvements and the channelization for the quiet zone. Uh, once we get the, this resolution passed and signed by the uh, council president and the mayor, it'll be sent off for, to the state for approval. And once that's done, we're ready to go and start building that quiet zone. So hopefully by Christmas, we won't have a choo-choo train, <laughs> or at least not the tooting from it anyway. Um, and just as a reminder, Halloween's coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, be careful, the little trick-or-treaters are gonna be out there, and so be extra careful while you're driving. And that's my safety recommendation for this month, and uh, thank you, sir, it's the uh, end of my report. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Yamakaitis? Thank you, Council President. I'm gonna start off with the personnel report. Does anyone have any questions? Seeing none, I'll start with number one in the police department, approval to perform background checks for 75 candidates. Number two in the police department, approval to post for the following positions. 
A, clerk one internally, B, network administrator internally and externally. Number three, in the office of the mayor, extending the time of employment for an intern of Ashante Haley, student assistant, to October 20th, 2017, at no additional cost to the city. Four, in the Division of Personnel, approval of the following FMLA, NJFLA leaves. A, employee ID number 006263, extension of FMLA leave from September 10th, 2017 through October 30th, 2017. B, employee ID number 106909, FMLA leave from September 9th, 2017 through December 8th, 2017. C, employee ID number 909081, FMLA leave from September 1st, 2017 through December 1st, 2017. D, employee ID number 009446, FMLA leave from September 19th, 2017 through November 20th, 2017. E, employee ID number 108322, Intermittent FMLA leave from August 25th, 2017 through August 24th, 2018. Number five, in the Division of Personnel, approve the rescission of the student internship of Makalamba Juma at the request of Mr. Juma, effective October 17th, 2017. Six, in the Department of Public Works, the appointment of James Venditto to the position of supervising mechanic at no, at no change in salary, pursuant to the Civil Service Commission certification of eligibles list effective November 1st, 2017. Number seven, in the fire department, approve the transfer of Glenn Matuska from DPW to fire department as a fire candidate at his present salary of $47,786, effective October 2nd, 2017. Number eight, in the Department of Construction Code, the appointment of the following part-time code enforcement officers, subject to the city's background check at the rate of $17.45 per hour, not to exceed 20 hours per week. Daniel Sapolevsky and Thomas Gassler, effective November 1, 2017. Number nine, in the Department of Health, approve the change in title of Alexis Rivera from clerk one to clerk two at the salary of $39,321, which is the minimum for the position, effective October 23rd, 2017. Number 10, in the office of the tax assessor, the change in title of Fatima Miller from a clerk one to clerk two at the salary of $39,321, which is the minimum for the position, effective October 23rd, 2017. Number 11, in the Department of Treasury, the change in title for Teresa Vitale to Principal Accountant, retroactive to December 10th, 2016, effective January 1st, 2017. Ms. Vitale's salary shall be $79,750 prorated. Based upon the 2016-2017 amended salary ordinance, there shall be a retroactive payment of $6,413.46 less applicable deductions through October 22nd, 2017. Number 12, in the Department of Treasury, the change in title for Jessica Slavinsky to purchasing assistant typing, retroactive to December 10th, 2016, at no change in salary. Number 13, in the Department of Treasury, the change in title for Christine Figueredo to assistant municipal treasurer retroactive to December 10th, 2016, at the rate per rated salary of $105,873, effective December 10th, 2016, Ms. Fergarito shall no longer receive a stipend for the position of Assistant Municipal Treasurer. 14, in the Department of Treasury, the change in title for Janice Brown to Administrative Secretary retroactive to December 10th, 2016, at no change in salary. Number 15, in the Department of Treasury, the change in title for Nancy Gomes to Technical Support Specialist 1, retroactive to December 10, 2016, at no change in salary. 
Number 16, in the Department of Treasury, the change in title for Margaret Nadler, the senior account clerk, retroactive to December 10, 2016, at no change in salary. Number 17, in the Division of Personnel, the change in title for Jessica Sheehy to personnel officer retroactive to December 10, 2016, at no change in salary. Number 18, in the Division of Personnel, the change in title for Mindy Kuzniak to assistant personnel officer retroactive to December 10, 2016, at no change in salary. Number 19, in the Office of Tax Collector, the change in title for Carolyn Minichenko to Clerk 3, retroactive to December 10, 2016, at no change in salary. Number 20, in the Office of the Tax Collector, the change in title for Carolyn Melanda to Clerk 2, retroactive to December 10, 2016, at no change in salary. Number 21, in the Office of the Tax Collector, the change in title for Deidre Green to Clerk 2, retroactive to December 10, 2016, effective January 1, 2017, Ms. Green's salary shall be $39,321 prorated. Based upon the 2016 and 2017 amended salary ordinance, there shall be a retroactive payment of $2,895.35, less applicable deductions through October 22, 2017. Number 22, in the Department of Public Works, accept the resignation in good standing of Tyler Reversky, effective October 2, 2017. Number 23, in the Police Department, accept the resignation of Thomas Zajac, effective September 23, 2017. I make a motion for this council to accept the personnel report as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Mrs. Ormond. Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Abstain. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Okay. Um, from the Mayor's Youth Commission, they're having, in conjunction with Morningstar Church, the Governor's Council on Alcohol uh, Drug Abuse, and the EAMM, the Masterpiece Program, they will be holding its annual Community Harvest Party on Tuesday, October 31st, from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the John Street Recreation Center. There will be food, games, contests, prizes, face painting, and of course, candy. The event is for youth ages 15 and under. If you would like to make a donation of candy, it can be dropped off at the Mayor's Office, the LMPC, and Morningstar Community Christian Center. Uh, for my Eighth Ward report, I'd just like to thank everyone who came out to the Eighth Ward community meeting last week. Uh, the police department did a great presentation. And one thing that was stressed was encouraging um, the Nixel system for people to sign up for that, as well as um, they were explaining how effective the virtual block watch cameras are when people sign up for it. Uh, there is a link on our city website. Uh, the good thing about that is the police explain that they're not watching to see everybody that's coming to and from your house. They just have a list of who has it. So if there's a crime in the area, they could contact the uh, people and say, can we check your camera out? Uh, I know in the 8th Ward, as well as citywide, we've had some incidents with people trying to break in, uh, looking for unlocked cars, as well as a couple of house break-ins. So they were able to get some uh, video of whoever it was out there looking to break in. But it is, you know, if you have a camera, please consider signing up for it. It's a great program and it will help to alleviate some of the crime. So um, again, thank you to the police department for that presentation. I also wanna thank everyone that participated as well as shopped in the Eighth Ward uh, community yard sale, which was two weeks ago. Um, we're looking forward to do it again in the spring. And um, trees, we uh, talked in caucus tonight. I have several large trees. They will be addressed this fall, this year. So I wanna thank Mr. Micucci for that. And um, if anybody has any questions, my number is 908-925-2309. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. That's my report. Thank you, Councilwoman. 
Councilwoman Kiki. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, I'd just like to mention that Councilman Medina is not here tonight. Uh, it's actually his anniversary, and he uh, took his wife out for a nice night and showed her that she's number one. So I just want to wish them a very happy anniversary and hope they have a wonderful evening. Uh, many of the things that I discuss are ninth and 10th Ward anyway. First, we'd truly like to thank uh, Joan Beviano for her assistance in the ninth and 10th Ward uh, yard sale. Uh, she organized it and got all the addresses together. And Dawn, if you're watching, we truly appreciate everything you do. Uh, lawn and leaf bags, uh, we did put uh, a message on next door neighbor. Uh, Councilman Medina delivered a lot yesterday. Um, I didn't want to be too far behind, so I have a confession to make. I want to thank my husband for delivering them to my residence today. Uh, a little bit of teamwork there. Uh, the Linden Police Department uh, Chief and the Traffic Bureau, I would just like to truly thank you. Um, many of our residents um, in the 9th and 10th Ward have had many concerns regarding speeding. Um, I have been checking it out a little more, and I have to say sometimes the ladder cars it does seem like they are going a lot faster than they are, uh, and it just sounds worse. But the patrols have been uh, in our neighborhoods uh, for the past three or four days now, and they're gonna continue working. I also contacted the county police as far as the outside areas of our ward, uh, Raritan Road and Style Street. So hopefully, with the help of everyone, we can, we can uh, curb some of our our issues, our traffic violations and issues. Uh, let's see, Alcala Park, I was receiving some complaints about the jungle gym. I guess all the rubber matting and everything is missing, the kids are getting hurt. Uh, within the next two weeks, our uh, public property department will be uh, fixing that at our, our Alcala Park, so that will be resolved. Uh, Councilman Medina wanted me to just tell everybody to have a safe and wonderful Halloween. Uh, lastly, there was two presentations tonight. Uh, both of them uh, dear to my heart. Uh, first, Nancy Braxton. Um, she is a wonderful city employee. I never really knew her well. I never actually knew she had breast cancer because she just kept chugging along and going to work and she was at all the concerts and, and all the events. And um, I, I really, some people you don't really know and then once you know a little thing, it clicks in and, and she's just an amazing woman. And I really commend her for the challenges she's been up against and, and thank her for all that she does in the city. And lastly, um, Patrolman, uh, I, I don't even recall his, uh, Peter Hammer. Um, investigator. Amazing. Investigator Hammer, I'm sorry, there's so many. Um, just amazing uh, what he did that day, what he, him just returning to work after a short period of time. 25 years ago, my father took a bullet in being on duty as a London police officer and I know the struggles and the issues that my family has gone through. I can't say what a wonderful person and heart he, uh, he has being able to, to go through that situation and return to work so quickly. And I have to say tonight when he stood up there and he said, you know, I'm not about public speaking, I just do my job and I wanna do the best. I feel like that was, I don't remember, but that was probably the same thing that my father said 25 years ago. You know, he just doesn't wear that badge on his uniform. It's absolutely in his heart and we're very, very lucky to have him. Um, and lastly, my niece Isabel, I have to say hello to her. Isabel Brooke, I love you so much and I hope everybody has a safe Halloween. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mayor? Yes, uh, thank you, Council President. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, make an announcement regarding the LEDC, that's the Linden Economic Development Corporation. Um, I'm gonna to announce tonight that Alex Laspinoso um, will be uh, heading that department uh, effective immediately. Uh, Alex is a long-term Lisbon resident, uh, and he has served uh, on the LEDC 
uh, for over for the last two years. Uh, Alex has been closely uh, watching uh, the prior LADC coordinator, who's Rich Purcell, and uh, I think he uh, is more than capable of picking up where, where Rich Purcell left off at. Uh, he's, I think he's going to do an excellent job. Uh, secondly, I had a gentleman in my office uh, come to visit me named Philip Generelli. Uh, Philip Generelli is from a company called First Power Energy, uh, and he uh, is looking for a site in town to um, establish a, uh, a plant that, that engages in something called downdraft gasification. Uh, one of the key products for the downdraft gasification uh, would be the uh, sludge that is generated at the uh, Linden Roselle uh, Sewage Authority. Um, now, when you think about the cost of the removal of the sludge at the uh, utility authority, I mean the um, sewage authority, it's a significant cost uh, to the taxpayers. So uh, it is our hopes that if he were to succeed at bringing this particular uh, operation to Linden, that he'd be able, it, it would result in significant cost savings uh, to the uh, Roselle, Linden Roselle Sewage Authority, and that cost saving could be passed down uh, to the residents of our town. Uh, so uh, we're going to be meeting with him again next month. Uh, he was going to come to City Hall today again to give us further information, but, but circumstances beyond his control wouldn't allow him to get here today. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the uh, uh, early on um, in 2015, we talked about establishing a hazardous material storage fee. Uh, this fee was merely a fee that would charge the industry in town uh, a fraction of a cent for every gallon that, that's, that they stored in our town. Um, well, last week we sat down with the key players in town uh, and we let them know of our intentions to establish this fee. Um, and the, the numbers that we first threw around were very high. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're going to be meeting again with the, um, the major players, and that's, that's your Philip 66, is your, um, uh, your Buckeye Pipeline, uh, Sitco, these are companies who house large, large amounts of um, hazardous material in our town. Now, the idea here is uh, we have a, um, a, a, a large police department, a very large fire department, uh, and where other municipalities can afford to uh, reduce their staff um, when they, in times of economic problems, Linden, we cannot afford to do so. Uh, we, we have to protect our assets. Uh, we've been uh, According to Homeland Security, we have the two most dangerous miles of um, two, two most dangerous miles on the East Coast, uh, with, as far as um, t terrorists are concerned. We're a terror, a terror target, so uh, we don't have the uh, the option of reducing our police or our fire department. So, um, going forward, I'm confident that the uh, governing body and the industry in this town will come up with a formula that I think is beneficial to both parties. Uh, because, again, uh, it's in their interest for us to continue the level of service and level of protection that we afford them now. Moving forward, um, as you all know, we mentioned that we had an RFQ for solar panels. Um, we had a small glitch uh, in our RFQ, in our RFP process, um, and, and that the uh, solar farm production exceeds the, the a company called Fiabilia, the load requirement. Initially, we thought that this company was going to be able to purchase all the electric from us, but unfortunately, the amount of electric that we're going to be generating will be a lot more than Fiabilia will be able to uh, purchase. So we're going to have to um, give them some extended time to figure out um, how, they should re how they should reply with regards to pr potentially selling the electric not only to Fiabilia, but to the, uh, to the grid. So that's going to require them at least two more months before um, they can reply, reply to our um, RFQ. More good news. Uh, St. George Avenue redevelopment. Um, I have the paperwork upstairs on my desk, uh, and I, I will be signing papers uh, that will allow the developer VVR to proceed with the development, at least phase one of the development. Um, they will be forwarding a check to the city uh, for $500,000 um, for, for part, for a partial payment of the of the uh, project and the, the property that they're purchasing. Um, I have uh, instructed our financial people to take that $500,000 and put it in a lockbox, along with the money that we received uh, for our Wood Avenue development, um, 
Capitaglia Meridia, which we've begun receiving pilot payments for, uh, which is over $200,000. I've instructed her to put that money in a lockbox and do not touch it because we're going to proceed as though we don't have that money uh, going forward so that we may continue to um, provide assistance to our residents in our town who are suffering from the, the taxes that are unfortunately putting a lot of people under a lot of financial duress. Uh, also, um, Capadaglia is um, beginning demolition uh, on Southwood Avenue so he can begin his phase two uh, development of Capadaglia Meridia properties. Uh, we're hoping uh, that he will have a shovel in the ground uh, by the spring of 2018. Moving, moving, moving forward, um, just like to uh, reiterate the councilwoman from the fifth ward's uh, remarks. Uh, Saturday the 21st, there'll be a garage sale in the uh, fourth and fifth wards. Um, you know, looking forward to the residents in the fourth and fifth ward uh, for them participating. It should be a good day for all. You can get rid of a lot of junk. Maybe my wife can clean out our closets and uh, our garage. A lot of junk there we need to get rid of. Um, October 27th, 7 o'clock p.m., we're having a public safety meeting um, to address the concerns of the 9th and 10th Ward residents. It will be at the five-star adult uh, daycare facility on Deerfield Avenue. Um, I hope residents from the 10th Ward and 9th Ward will be able to attend. Um, uh, we have uh, received a number of complaints, and it is our intention, uh, it is my intention as the mayor, to try to address them as uh, as as properly as I, as I can. We will bring this information to the chief so uh, he and his staff can evaluate and come up with ideas to make things a little bit better over there. On Tuesday, October 31st, the Linden Mayor's Youth Commission and Morningstar Community Christian Center uh, will have their annual community harvest party. Um, it will be at the Linden Multipurpose Center uh, at 1025 John Street. It will begin at 4 o'clock p.m. and end at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, this event um, is becoming an annual event. Uh, it's a, a very good event. Uh, it, we have children in our community who attend. I mean, hundreds of children have attended in the past. It gives them an opportunity to come have a good, good time, and they don't have to be you know, worried about trick-or-treating. So it becomes a safety issue, and uh, we're very happy that this particular event has turned out to be a complete success. Um, we're also having our third annual truck, bike, and airplane show at the Linden Airport. That's going to be Sunday, November 5th, 2017, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, it's a $20 registration fee per car. Um, this particular uh, event is a scholarship fundraiser in, mem in memory of uh, Officer Frank Vigiano and Joey Rodriguez. All the proceeds will benefit the Linden PVA Scholarship Fund the Unity Tour Scholarship Fundraiser, and the Linden Tigers Sports Camps, LLC. And last but certainly not least, um, I received a correspondence from our uh, freeholder, Christopher Hudak, um, and it reads as follows. I understand Mayor Armstead made a few comments relative to the Union County, uh, the, the county budget, and the county services received by Linden residents at the September 2017 council meeting. Specifically, the mayor offered context to the municipal tax increase in comparison to the respective tax levies of Union County, the Linden Library, and the Linden School Board. While these budgets are unrelated and have no bearing on a municipal tax levy or budget, I certainly appreciate the point the mayor was seeking to illustrate, okay? Um, he goes further on and he mentions a few things about what the county's doing. Uh, and I'm very happy he responded uh, because perhaps um, he's going to ensure as our freeholder that we continue to get more from the county so that we can uh, feel a little more happy about the $30 million that we're spending. So uh, I thank him for uh, responding. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, we're going with resolutions 2017-333 through 2017-364. Public comments will be permitted for those specific resolutions to be removed from the consent approval. Please read the synopsis of the resolutions which have been prepared by the city clerk's office, which is informative and self-explanatory. 
However, if you wish to address a specific resolution, the council will entertain uh, questions on it. I, I, I think so. We're going to send a. Ms. Malik? Well, we just decided to do it today. Oh, just decided. 335. Yeah. 349. 350. No, me and the chief. And 360. Anybody else? Okay, may I have a motion, please, for resolutions? Hold on a minute. We need to have Okay, uh, let's go back one step. I'm sorry. Uh, I got it. Councilman can Brown. Make, can I make a motion to remove uh, resolution uh, 361 60. and ask for a second? It's 360. 360. 360? 360. 360. 360, yes. A second? Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this time, I need a motion of approval for 2017 333 through 2017 364, with the exceptions of 335, 349, 350, and 360. 360 has been removed, so um, I make a motion for the approval of resolutions uh, 333 to 364, with the exception of 335, 330, 349, I mean, 349 and 350. And ask for a second. I second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Malik, can you please come up forward? 335. What I just want to know is what does this resolution do? I mean, the, the software, uh, licenses, related services, what is this for? We don't have Mrs. Sack here. Mm -hmm. um, the software that the city uses, such as Windows, et cetera, is all subject to licensing agreements. The state of New Jersey has gone to bid for those licensing agreements, and we're using the state contract to uh, um, to obtain those licenses that we need to continue to use the software that runs our computers. Good enough. 349. The resolution auth authorizing the shelter agreement between the Red Cross and the city of Linden. What is this about? What does it in what's involved? Yeah. Chief Dooley? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Number 349. Uh, 349 with the Red Cross and the city of Linden is What's uh, it about? To join up for shelters? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bodek, do you uh, remember this? Uh, basically what it is is the Red Cross is going to be working with the city of Linden, the uh, fire department and the police department to get certain buildings to be shelters. Shelters, okay, so this is during states of emergency. Yes. Why not? Gotcha, okay. Thank are these buildings that are currently vacant? Or? Uh, no, we don't know exactly what buildings will be. Okay. But if you remember, in our days, uh, all the schools have shelters, and uh, I'm sure it will be different buildings as needed. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, 350? Just someone to explain a little bit more what's entailed in this. Uh, oh, this is about the lighting. Uh, do we have uh, Mr. McCarthy? Three, uh, yeah, so this, this is, energy this is, aggregation is, program, is this the one that you could have signed up with? And yes, and you can yeah. opt out if you don't want to. Right. Yes. So what is this about supplying services? I mean, why this do we is need a this continuation resolution? of that program uh, with a different supplier at a better rate for the citizens of Linden. And is there going to be another opt-in, opt-out? Yes. You yes. always have that choice. Okay. Hope, hopefully it's going to come in a timely manner. Very good. All right. Mm -hmm. I thank you. Can I have can I have a motion for 335 
349 and 350, please. The president, make a motion for the approval of uh, versions 335, 349, and 350. And ask for a second. I second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? She left. Mrs. Alvarez, Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Okay, at this time, we're going to go in first reading. If there's anyone wishing to make a comment, there will be no questions allowed. But after the public comments on each, we'll continue. So I will call. Uh, Deputy Clerk, will you please read 6166? An ordinance amending ordinance number 61-24 authorizing exemptions from taxes and the execution of tax agreements for payments in lieu of taxes for new industrial structures and also including improvements to commercial structures on an individual basis after review, evaluation, and approval of each application by the City Council pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 21-7. Does anybody wish to make a comment? In that case, may I have a motion, please? Council President, I'd like to make a motion to introduce for consideration Ordinance 61-66 and ask for a second, please. I'll second that. Number nine is absent. Thank you. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? <coughs> Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Mrs. Hickey is absent. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Wilder, can you please read 61-67? An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 7 traffic of an ordinance adopting and enacting the revised general ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999, passed November 23rd, 1999, and approved November 24th, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Traffic section 7-34, don't block the box, add East Elizabeth Avenue and Northwood Avenue. So does anybody wish to make a comment on this ordinance? Okay. May I have a motion, please? Council President, make, um, ask for in, approval for introduction of ordinance 61 dash 67 and ask for a second. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Hona, can you please read 61-68? An ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 2 administration of an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Adopting and Enacting the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999, passed November 23, 1999, and approved November 24, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Delete Section 2-12.10, Off-Duty Employment of Police Officers for Police-Related Activities in its entirety, and add new Section 2-12.10, off-duty employment of police officers for police-related activities. Does anyone wish to make a comment? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move for introduction of Ordinance 6168 and request a second. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Honan, can you please read 61-69? Bond ordinance amending bond ordinance number 59-16, finally adopted by the City Council of the City of Linden, New Jersey, on April 21st, 2015. Inserting after the phrase replacement of the roof at the Linden Multipurpose Center, the phrase 7th Ward Recreation Center, PAL Memorial Field, and City Hall. Does anybody wish to make a comment? May I have a motion, please? All right, Council President, I'd like to move for introduction ordinance number 6169 and request a second. Second. Mrs. Orman? Yes. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Ms. Honan, can you please read 61-70? An ordinance to amend 
and supplement Chapter 7 traffic of an ordinance entitled An Ordinance Adopting and Enacting the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Linden, 1999, passed November 23, 1999, and approved November 24, 1999, and as amended and supplemented. Section 7-10, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets. Add West Elizabeth Avenue, South Side, beginning at a point 450 feet west of North Style Street and continuing westerly a distance of 425 feet. Does anybody wish to make a comment? May I have a motion, please? Council President, I move for introduction of ordinance number 6170 and ask for a second. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Mr. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. At this time, we're going to take comments from members of the public in attendance. There will be no personal political derogatory comments, and it will not exceed five minutes. Anybody that's interested should have signed in here. Anybody else? Okay. Can we start, please, with Mr. Halloran? Can you do me a favor? Can, can, you, can you press the mic, sir? Sir, the, the microphone, sir. Press the button. Yeah, can't hear. I'm sorry. My name is Craig Halloran, 120 Donaldson Place. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I just had a general question. What does the council do? And with my suggestion that I bring up to different meetings, and are there any comments on any of those? Uh, Another concern I have is what's going on with the rest of the General Motors property. I see warehouses functioning there, but I see the side closer to Route 1, no activity at all. Is there a problem with getting this developed besides ShopRite? I don't know. I mean, that's why I'm asking. Uh, and I brought up an idea, I believe, at the last council meeting about resident parking permits, you know, to address, help address the issue of parking problems. Uh, another issue was has the town gotten into, I know one time we did share a patrol car for the police department with Roselle. Is there any other uh, movement towards sharing or consolidating services with the fire, other fire departments, police departments, public works, boards of education or anything? Uh, And, you know, another question is, will the Linden Port Authority have the ability to tax people in town? That's an issue that I, I didn't hear addressed or anything, but I did hear that we do now have a Port Authority. Uh, and, you know, another issue as far as parking. Can apartment buildings with, uh, say, f more than four apartment units be forced to provide parking for their re tenants? Uh, same thing goes with businesses. I know on my street, it's a short, end, you know, short one-way street right near school number eight. We have a local business where their employees park in front of houses. I mean, in front of my house, we only own one car, so it really doesn't matter to me directly in front of my house. But I know other people have, you know, there are a lot of other cars where people may park there and then walk down to the train station. Uh, you know, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, and how does the town pr uh, plan to provide for notification of uh, meetings, events, uh, and other issues for people that don't have the technology to get that, like internet? I don't own a computer. I don't have internet. I don't have a smartphone. I choose not to get that, but I, as you can see, I've been showing up at several meetings. I am interested in what's going on in my town, our town, I should say, not just my town. And uh, another question I brought up at one of the other meetings was, are there weight restrictions on residential streets? I live right near school number eight. I've seen several tractor trailer trucks go down my street. And this one's probably more directed to the police chief than anybody else. Uh, at another meeting, I brought up the issue of bicycles and rules and regulations. Are these going to be enforced? Today, I was coming home from running errands, and I pulled down my street, and I waited because an adult on a bicycle was riding down the sidewalk going the wrong way on my street. 
I believe that's against, if nothing else, state regulations on bicycles. And you know, this is not the only time I've seen, you know, issues like this. I would like to take this stuff up. And the mayor made a comment about somebody coming to provide removal of sewage from the Lyndon Roselle Sewage Authority. I do have a little bit of experience in working in sewage. Uh, I would like to get more information about that at the mayor's convenience. Uh, anything else, I am glad to take up with my councilman, Barry Gavick. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, have sir. A good day. Ms. Villani? How are you, Ms. Villani? Good. I am coming wearing my Board of Ed hat, Teresa Villani, 225 Swarthmore Road. And I am here with the permission to speak on behalf of the board by our board president, Jack Colibus. Recently, it's come to our attention that a lot of our constituents are confused over the budget and what the Board of Education's portion of it is. And I know deep in my heart that none of our esteemed elected officials would ever purposely give out false or misleading information. So we had uh, Ms. Gaylord uh, put together a little graphic so that all of the council people can have a talking point with their constituents if they want to know about um, the budget. And on the first page of it, it's just simply the last uh, 2007 to 2015, where the school budget was then 56% of the budget. Now, if we go back 18 years, it was up to 65 or 68% of the budget was Board of Ed. We've gotten it down now to about 50%. And the second page shows a tax analysis of the last 12 years where the county has gone up 0.3%. The school portion of our tax bill has gone down 6.47%. And the municipality has gone up 6.86%. And I know that Ms. Gaylord works with uh, Ms. Zach, and these numbers are accurate, and I'm sure you can ask them both. Um, and I also have, I have a copy for everyone. I only bought one copy of the budget presentation, uh, in case anybody wants to look at it, make copies. I didn't want to waste all the colored ink. <laughs> um, I do would like to invite everyone to come to Board of Ed meetings, because unless you're there getting the information firsthand, things go back and forth, so you don't really know what's going on. And I know it conflicts with the council meetings. We also have, which we started when Ms. Orman was on and we've really uh, taken hold of it, it was a parent EST meeting. That's once a month with just a couple members of the Board of Ed in a very casual setting, so you don't have to sit through all the motions and everything else. And you can ask board members straight up questions in a very casual setting. Um, mostly for parents wanting to know what's going on, but please, you're all more than welcome to attend. The next one is going to be on Tuesday the 14th. They're held at the administration building at 6.30. We have light refreshments, including really great Pomptoni and brownies. <laughs> and um, one other thing we have is Dr. Robert Tozzi has started uh, chats with the superintendent. And he had his first one last month, or this month. And he's going to do it three or four more times. Again, it's a casual setting for you guys or anybody in the public to come and ask the superintendent point blank questions and get the answer right there on the spot. So we're really trying to step up the communication with everyone. And uh, finally, I just want to do a little shout out to um, two of our schools, school six and school eight. We're part of a pilot program that Dr. Robert Tozzi uh, got started. And we are na now nationally recognized as Apple Schools. And we're going to be rolling that um, program out across our district. And we have a lot of schools in the state who were, were designated as um, future ready. But none of them, other than our two schools, were designated as Apple Schools. 
And this means it's not just the technology that we have and we give to the kids, but the, uh, the uh, curriculum that they're learning. A reminder to everybody that we do have full day kindergarten. We have full day pre-K four that is not funded by the city. And we also have a pre-K three class. Um, a lot of great things happening. We have a lot of new classes, including app development, coding, and a lot of things that are applicable to today's market. So again, I have the tax analysis for anybody who wants it so they can show their constituents and one copy of the budget for you guys. Thank you. Am I allowed to comment, Council President? No, you comment at the end for the one minute. Mr. President, can I get one minute also? Yes, but we're not there yet. I will announce it. Anything else? No, that's it. I just really want to say thank you for, I know we're always working together and trying to get our budget into control and more importantly, we want to get the, our community to know what's going on and, and the only way we can do it is to get the, you know, the information out there. We're doing it on social media, we're doing it in meetings and Dr. Rapatozzi will gladly come to any of your uh, ward meetings to meet with your constituents so that they can ask them questions. Ask them the hard questions, I do. Thank you very much. Thank you and they can speak but I can. Let me tell you, you guys are doing a great job. Okay, you are. Okay, and that goes to we, the whole board and the teachers. Okay, and Dr. Robert Tosi, everybody's doing a very good job. I have to, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you myself, I got on the board, other members got on for more altruistic meeting, me, reasons. I wanted to know what was going on for myself yes. since my kids are in the school. And I figured the only way I'd know was actually to get behind the scenes. And it takes a lot of time out of, away from my family life, but we got really, really good things going on. Yes. And I know Lyndon gets a bad rap a lot of times, but that, a, lot, a lot of that is in the past. And we really have so, we have an IB program that is globally recognized. Out of 33,000 high schools in the United States, 33,000, there are only 900 of them that have this certification. And only a handful of them are in New Jersey. We're the only ones in Union County that offers this global recognized program that can get them, that we have one kid who walked into college with two years of college credit. Yes. So, <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Principato. How you doing, John? I'm doing well. How are you? Just fine. John Principato, 1706 Westover Road. Um, I want to mention again about the illegal dumping that's been going on around the city. It's not just in the fifth ward. It is in the seventh ward where I own a business right down the street. Um, we had, a, we actually, there was a fire at the old Mr. T's, you're aware of that building. And it's just, it seems like the building's falling down. There was no repairs, it was never boarded up. Maybe we can talk to the owner. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure who owns the property. I was gonna take a trip upstairs and see if, we could, if I could find out, but I know the council knows that area really well, and he may, you may even know who that is. It just, it's a mess, so just something to think about. Um, also, uh, talking about the Fifth Ward, I, I'm, I'm all over the city every day. And I went again to check out behind the John Street Center, and it seems like nothing's, nothing's been cleaned up. I think that maybe we should do whatever possible, whatever we need to do to, to handle that. It, it's, an, it's an eyesore, and it, it blemishes the city. And uh, I know we're not about that. Uh, I also I want to mention the the seven hundred thousand dollars that the mayor mentioned before about putting in a lockbox to help residents pay their taxes. If, is, is that what I understood it as? That's that's what I understood it as. Um, I don't know that that's the right thing to do with that money, and uh, I don't know exactly what the intentions are 
are, is that money going to be used for people who need to pay their taxes, have, can't pay their taxes to help people, or is that money that we're going to put aside maybe to accrue interest so we can knock down everybody's taxes? Uh, and then the other thing is that the mayor also mentioned the meeting at Five Star, which is, that's in my ward, I believe. Uh, something about things that are going on in the ninth and 10th ward. Can I answer I, that, Council President? Uh, no, you will have your minute. Everybody will have their minute. No, no questions. Okay. You make well, your I'm, comments. I, I'm, I'm, let me just finish this comment. Uh, I'm not aware of anything that's going on. I know that the ninth and 10th ward council people who keep us abreast of everything that's going on in, in, in my ward and the ninth ward, because I have connections in the ninth ward also, haven't said anything to us about what's going on. Um, I'd really like the mayor to, to say what is going on. Let us know what is going on. I forgot to mention it, Mr. Prince Pato. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's the 27th, that meeting? Is that what it is, the 27th? Okay, 7 p.m. All right, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that we need to know what's going on right now. Everybody in the city needs to know what's going on, um, unless it's confidential information, which I don't think there are, anything should be confidential to the residents of the city of Linden. And that's, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And we have last but not least, Mr. Ronald Martins. Ronald Martins, 328 Minor Terrace. Uh, there was an article in the ledger earlier this month about two gentlemen from Elizabeth who were apprehended stealing the wheels off a car. And they came before uh, former Linden Judge DeLeo, you folks probably know about this. Uh, to make a long story short, their right to a uh, to counsel was apparently denied to a public defender. So on appeal, the appellate judge awarded these two guys $575,000. Uh, I had to reread that. I, I thought it was, to, I checked the calendar, see if it was April 1st. Uh, to me, what the second judge did, that's, that's the real crime, to reach into Lyndon's pocket and hand over taxpayer dollars to these two, whether they're guilty or not. Apparently they spent, uh, 60 days in jail more than what they should have. So my question is, is, is that the end? Does, does the Linden taxpayer have to fork over more than half a million dollars to these two? Uh, is Linden gonna fight this? Is, if anyone can provide an update on this amazing tale, uh, we, could, we could plant a lot of trees and fix a lot of sidewalks with $575,000. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At this time, I need a motion to close the public hearing part. Council President, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing and ask for a second, please. I second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? No. Yamakaitis? Yes. Uh, Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Okay, at this time, the dais will have one minute to answer any things that were brought up in the public comments. Uh, Ms. Uh, Councilwoman Hickey? Yes. Uh, um, not yet, oh. not yet, hold on a minute. Yes. Mayor, you too? Yes, thank you. Uh, Chief? Nothing, sir. Uh, Mr. Brown? Anybody else? Cosby? Put there. Mr. Javik. Yes. One minute to respond. That's what the one minute is for. To respond. No or just to respond. You have, did you miss something? Okay. I'll, I'll put you in, Mr. Brooks. 
Everybody else to respond, Mr. Brooks, you're special. Okay, uh, let's start. Um, Mayor, do you want to get started? Uh, Mayor, before you start, even though you have one minute, I want to give you a little bit extra time. I want you to answer uh, who asked the question. Uh, Mr. Halloran asked, which, oh, he's here. He asked a question about, um, he doesn't have internet, how to get things that are going on in the city. And you mentioned yesterday, I believe, about the letter that's going to go out. Yes, Can you we, please we, add that? And that will not be part of your mandate. I just want you to add that, please, for me. Okay. Okay. Um, no problem. All right, sir. I'm up, I'm up first? Yes, oh, please. Okay. You've got to restart the clock then, okay. <laughs> Um, well, first of all, uh, we are going to be having a, a, a citywide newspaper that will be issued uh, sometime around uh, de December 1st, okay? And we'll try to put as much information as we possibly can to help those people who don't have internet access or um, who, don't have, uh, who aren't, don't have cable. We'll do everything humanly possible to get that information disseminated to you, okay? Um, now, I'll you start, start your minute now, you sir. Start my minute now. Okay, <laughs> yes. listen. Uh, I, I, I can appreciate um, Mr. Villani bringing a, um, a, a pie chart and the graphs and all that stuff. That's good stuff. Um, I appreciate that. But the uh, fact of the matter is, um, I'm trying to figure out how, as a school board, you can justify spending $500,000 on new created administrative jobs um, when our classrooms are crowded with 28 to 30 students in every room. Um, and, it, and you've limited our teachers to $200 uh, per class to buy materials. Um, and school employment size has grown by over 200 for a total of 1,100. Employee size has grown uh, to a total of 1,100 uh, jobs in the city. You're leasing the St. Elizabeth building for $5 million, okay? Fact of the matter is, these graphs don't show that the school tax levy has increased by over $8 million while our school rating has remained the same, impacting the value of our homes. As a result of the poor rating, parents can choose to send their children to other open enro enrollment public schools at a cost to the taxpayers per child, which is close to $13,000 for grades 6 to 8 and over $14,000 for, for grades 9 to 12. So again, um, we can put graphs in and do all that you know, pictorial stuff, but the fact of the matter is that we're spending a lot of money up there and it's not being spent properly according, as far as I'm concerned. I thank um, you, Mayor. And, and I think, uh, a, please, please. $119 million is being spent. Oh, that's what, what, that's what, with your aid that you're spending. $119 million. Thank so you, Mayor. Kind of money, Mayor, please. I, I think our education should be a little bit. Mayor, you got your better. point across, sir. Thank you. Okay, I love it here. Uh, Councilman Brown, I'm going to ask you a favor before I start your minute. Can you please answer Mr. Halloran about the share services that we have? And yeah. then when you finish with that, we'll start your minute. All right, so in regards to share service, I think it's a very important question. So a couple of years ago, I want to say maybe three, four years ago, when I became chairman of finance, is the idea of Linden becoming a share service hub. So one is our lo strategic location where we have Route 1 and 9 and one, uh, on one side. We have Rawway, Clark, all these other. And so we did have meetings with other municipalities to see what services that we can offer that they would pay us for. One example would be Roselle as far as tree cutting. We offer that service, but what we found out, if residents remember, is that trees weren't being cut in Linden, so we canceled that type of contract because we want to take care of Linden first. So this is something that we are going to revisit again, but we will make sure that any shared service contracts that we do enter into, we're not neglecting the needs of Linden residents first. So it has to make sense in both parties. So we are looking into that again. We do look at it every year. Uh, another shared services is one Linden philosophy. I see some board members here so they can go back and ask Kathy Gaylord and the superintendent is about maybe three, four months ago is uh, we had a meeting with the Board of Education, the library, uh, the sewage authority and the city of Linden is that we have four separate budgets and how do we come together as one Linden to on with, and, and on philosophy of scales of economy, how we can pull our resources together because everyone here pays property taxes to those four entities 
but there's four different budgets. So is there ways that we can work together? So we did have one meeting in regards to that, and we're looking to have a meeting going forward to see what resources we can pull together in order to relieve the tax burden of residents in general, because you have a budget here, budget here, a budget here, four separate budgets, but at the end of the day, Linden taxpayers only getting one tax bill. So those are things that we are looking at. Um, in regards to now, my minute, the Board of Education, thank you for the pie chart. The thing is with the pie chart, and one thing I want to say, and I've said it before, is very misleading. I've said it before and we said it again, residents do not pay property taxes based off percentages of a pie chart. They, be, they pay property taxes based off your tax rate and assessed value. And so with the, no, no, and I, and I don't want to argue or debate with anybody, because I can, I think I know budgets here more than anybody else. I look at what the tax rate is, and if we want to compare apples to apples, we need to look at what the tax rate increase has been for the municipality and the Board of Education. And I'm not saying whether one group's doing a better job or not, that's why we need to come together, but the fact remains is that certain entities has a higher tax rate, and that tax rate has increased to a higher number than other entities. And I don't want to point fingers, because that's not what we're here to do but we need to give the right information that the percentages, as far as what you pay, no one gets a tax bill that says you pay 20%, 30%. You get a tax bill that shows your tax rate against what your assessed value is. Thank you, Councilman. we need to talk about. Ms. Cosby. Do I get extra time? <laughs> no. See? Anyway, I was gonna just respond to some of the uh, statements that were made with regard to Ms. Mrs. Bellani. Shared services is something that we can do with the City of London and the Board of Education. I have mentioned a couple of departments, one specific department that you all have down to a science, and our department uh, is weak and had some issues, and that was just the personnel department. We're at over $200,000, and if we were to give you guys a portion of that and have our hiring go through you, we would save a lot of money and a lot of angst for potential employees, current employees, and council members. And Mr. Principato, to the lot behind the center, the weeds were finally cut, but now it reveals some of the debris that's still there, like there's a, a bathtub, which was hilarious, that I didn't see behind the bushes, but they're working on it slowly but surely, so it, it's, it's a work in progress, and I'm grateful that finally we are getting some attention. I'm gonna say it publicly, put up fencing. We need some temporary fencing until the time where we get a developer to get going, but there should be fencing put up. And with regards to what Ron said about lawsuits, the culture here in London not is, is just lawsuits. If you looked and you took an opportunity, John, to Oprah, um, what the employees are doing as far as putting in complaints against the city, your head would spin because people want, they think that the city of London is a cash cow. So it starts here, the culture with the employees. If you look at somebody cross-eyed, they want to sue the city of London, and that's inappropriate. So when you say that the second judge did what he did, I mean, he thought that he was doing a service for those individuals, and you know, for whatever the tort he thought it was, but yeah, lawsuits here are a mess. Ms. So. Cosby, thank you. Councilwoman Hickey. Thank you, Council President. Um, there's something very important I forgot to mention, and I want to thank the mayor for reminding me. Um, and also, Councilman Medina sent me a message. On uh, October 27th, we are hosting a, a community meeting at the Five Star Daycare at 7 p.m. I'm just waiting for confirmation from the owner, Michael, in the morning and need to confirm with the police department and the chief. And then what we'll do is we will drop a flyers around the whole entire 9th and 10th ward over the weekend making confirmation. I think it's important that, you know, the last week we've had a lot of um, comments on, on Facebook, on social media. So uh, Armando and I want to uh, make sure that the public is aware of what the officers, the traffic department has found in our both of our wards the past few days. So like I said, confirmation uh, uh, we'll be getting probably tomorrow morning at Five Star Daycare at 7 p.m., which is on Deerfield Terrace. Uh, refreshments will be served. 
and um, we'll get it out on social media as soon as we have the confirmations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Councilman Hickey, we already booked it. It's, it's okay. You don't have to do confirmation. Mayor, it's please, confirmed. Mayor. We booked it already. Okay, Mayor, but it's I don't not want your to time, waste, please. I don't want to waste your time booking it again. We booked it already. Mayor, please. I'm sure you guys can talk about it later on. Well, I just don't want the public to think that we have to book it. It's already booked. Okay, thank you. Chief wasn't aware, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Javik. Yes, I, I want to just acknowledge this gentleman uh, that came up to the podium here. Uh, uh, hold on, Councilman. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Excuse me? No, sir, sir, I told you we have already closed, we have already. Mr. Mack, please sit. Mr. Mack, please. Mr. Mack, please sit down. Mr. Bordick, did we get that on the record? He didn't speak into the microphone. So. All right, thank you. <laughs> Sit down, please, Mr. Mack. Oh, they heard me. It's on the record. Thank you. Councilman Javik, I apologize. Can you please start? Yes. Uh, okay, so I'm just acknowledging the gentleman that mentioned about the weight restrictions. Uh, the police are looking into that for trucking. There is restrictions, and we have a big issue with trucking through all the streets. We're working on that right now. Um, the four family idea is a great idea. I wish we can come up with something to subsidize in some way, say a four family, especially I know you from the area on Price Street, there's many of those four families, they do not have driveways and they have the availability to have a driveway. So if we can subsidize them in some way, maybe to force them to have a driveway so all these cars can come off of that street, I'm gonna start looking into that more. Um, let's see, resident parking permits we are doing through through the city right now. And you hit on quite a few other subjects, but I'll talk to you privately about that, okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Brooks. Thank you. What I'm going to say, I need everybody to understand that that's my opinion and my opinion only. It does not represent everybody that's here. We as council people, we have to answer for money numbers. And we have to answer to 40,000 people out there. But my belief has always been that it is our job as parents, as adults, to embrace our kids and educate them. Because one day they'll come back and they will help us on our future. Because if we don't, someone else will come and they will embrace them. And they'll come back, but it will not be to help us on our future. It doesn't matter if it's 50%, 60%, 70%. The money that we put on our kids, I believe is well spent. And I don't have kids in the schools, but I did. Okay. That's just my opinion. The following council meetings will be as follows. Council conference meeting Monday, November 20th, 2017 in the council conference room, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. 
Council Conference meeting prior to the Council meeting, Tuesday, November 21st, 2017, 6 p.m. in the Council Conference Room, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. Council meeting Tuesday, November 21st, 2017, at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers, City Hall 301 Northwood Avenue. I should have all that memorized by now. I need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Council President, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mrs. Ormond? Yes. Javik? Yes. Brown? No. Brooks? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Sadowski? Yes. Strano? Yes. Yamakaitis? Yes. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Alvarez? Yes. Have everybody a good night.